Hello everyone. Today in the series of Dr. Lexus Kiel interviews, we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Rajiv Chawla, who is a leading diabetologist from New Delhi. He has participated in various clinical research phase two and phase three studies as a principal investigator. He is a president of the Research Society. Thank you so much, Dr. for Thank the interview. You, bro. Uh, so to begin with the first question, as you are one of the leading diabetologists in New Delhi, can you please throw some light on the current scenario and the prevalence of diabetes in that region? Uh, as far as prevalence is concerned, well, there has not been a recent epidemiological data from Delhi, but it is presumed while, I mean, going through the data of INDEB and other studies, previous studies, that current prevalence of type 2 diabetes in most of the metros is close to 12 to 14 percent. Mm -hmm. Even rural prevalence is also picking up the tune of 8 to 10 percent, which is a real cause of strong, uh, I mean, concern and it is something like coming like a storm to mm. India. All right. Uh, so moving on to the next one, could you please uh, elaborate on the microvascular and the macrovascular complications in diabetes? Well, micro and macrovascular complications are uh, conventionally classified and graded differently. We have our own hypothesis and it is a published data that micro and macrovascular complication in diabetes should be viewed upon as a continuum of the same phenomena. phenomena. They are not distinct. So with that I mean to say that normally it is thought that there is an intersection between micro and macro complication and it is thought that macro complications start much earlier before the onset of diabetes maybe by 5 to 10 years also while micro complications start coming only after the onset of the disease and they follow a very linear relationship in terms of duration of disease that means somewhere down the line close to 10 to 12 years you will start uh, seeing retinopathy or nephropathy or peripheral neuropathy for the first time. But from our own data, we are wiser that many times because there is a delayed diagnosis by them, you already have macrovascular complication and in, in Indian patient, many of the patient will have either background diabetic retinopathy which is a microvascular complication or even peripheral neuropathy right at the time of diagnosis also. This was also one of our own data which we presented in RHSDA 2005 that almost 16 percent patient had microalbumin right at the time of diagnosis and peripheral neuropathy was also seen in about 12 percent of patient and another 10 percent patient had background diabetic retinopathy right at the time of diagnosis. All right, okay. Uh, so, Doctor, moving on, um, you have participated in various clinical research uh, in phase 2 and phase 3 clinical trials as a principal investigator. So, could you please share your experience? Yeah, it has been a wonderful experience for almost 15 years. We have been participating in various clinical trials. We have been principal investigator with Novo, certain phase 3 trials. I was in front to mention one of the empagliflozlin safety and efficacy trial both in normal versus placebo and also in renal impaired arm. There also I was one of the principal investigator in phase 3 trial before this EMPA was launched in this country. So, I mean, uh, you tend to get much wiser after doing phase 2 and phase 3 trial. That is how you know how the research and methodologies are drawn and how a hypothesis is generated before entering into the trial and subsequently how the results and the statistical calculations are done. So, it, I mean, gives you huge amount of insight into various clinical trials and it has made very easy for us to understand various CV outcome trials which are very, very popular these days with uh, any of the SGLT2 or maybe APP4 trials. Okay. Uh, so, Doctor, does meditation and help, yoga help in uh, curing diabetes? It surely yes. helps because both meditation and yoga, morning also we had one of the session in RSSDI. Mm. Uh, it is an IPDS study where RSSDI has done a multicentric research on prevalence of pre-diabetes and conversion to type 2 diabetes mm. after giving phenogric seeds as well as practicing yoga. And it is known that with yoga and with meditation, you tend to reduce your counter-regulatory hormones or stress hormones. So immediately, your sugar starts coming down because insulin resistance gets reduced, your lipids also improve, and immediately there is a correction of hypertension also. So overall, CV outcomes and overall, I mean, metabolic uh, milieu gets improved if you are doing regular exercise, which is at least 30 to 60 minutes, you are doing regular yoga 
and there are certain types of yoga exercises which tend to give you I mean uh, reduction in uh, not only glycemic control but also reduction in overall counter aggregate hormones. Okay, uh, so doctor what tips do you give to your patients who are recently diagnosed with diabetes? Well definitely whenever patient comes to us for the first time, first thing is that we I mean try to sit with the patient, try to do a counseling. We try to explain them that although prevalence of type 2 and type 1 is rising all across the globe but it is not something that uh, something hell has happened. Many of the patient they almost have are in the either uh, stage of denial or they go into depression moment they come to know that they have type 1 or type 2 diabetes. So it is very important to counsel them about the disease and we tell to them that uh, right from uh, time of diagnosis it is important to look for all micro and macro complication as I said that many of the patient might have a delayed diagnosis so they might have onset of micro complication also right at the time of diagnosis so a routine screening for all patients for various micro we look for fundus we look for feet we do neuropathy examination we look for their lipid profile look for their micro albuminuria their hv1c and based on overall profile of the patient that is how we initiate their treatment starting from lifestyle modification then adding metformin and as per HP1C and the sugar profile we then tend to add other drugs. So it is very very important to counsel patient, prepare them right in the beginning that if you teach them well about their diabetes it becomes very easy to control their sugar and they sort of become captain of their own ship. Uh, so, Doctor, lastly, uh, could you please share your experience regarding RSSDI 2018? It has been wonderful. I have been the scientific chair for this conference. I have been designing and drafting the scientific program. It was a huge experience. We have tried to explore almost every possible chapter in diabetes, every possible topic starting from the basic research, conceptual level to advancement in terms of technology, therapeutics and everything. So, and uh, what we have done is uh, we have, I mean, blended and mixed the program in such a way that it has been evenly distributed all across all four days and we have tried to have the best experts, battery both national and international speakers for that and we have given them topics based on their expertise in that particular area so that they can do huge amount of justice to the topic which has been given to them. Alright, thank you so much for the interview. It was a pleasure thank having you. you here. Thank you.